Hello everyone, Duke here with the 12th and final episode of this Napoleon's Battles mini-series. Yes, we have made it to the end, to the finale, to the climax, uh, to the final battle as the Anglo-Dutch at the Battle of Waterloo. This has been a two-part uh, finale fighting the Battle of Waterloo from both sides. Uh, last episode, part 11, we fought as the French under Napoleon and reverse history and managed to smash our way through the British, Dutch and Prussian armies. And now we must flip uh, over to the um, eponymous Iron Duke and command uh, the Allied army and stop Napoleon once and for all. Uh, so I'm going to read out the info on the battle and then for the video and the briefing at the beginning of the battle, I've noted that it's Wellington doing it, but he doesn't talk, there's no voice actor, so instead of being sat in awkward silence... Um, I'll read it out for you. I might put on a voice. Um, we'll see. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, the Battle of Waterloo. The Battle of Waterloo, 18th of June, 1815. Uh, Napoleon had the feeling he had won the war as he advanced towards the Anglo-Dutch army at Waterloo. The Prussians were retreating, pursued by a French corps, and only Wellington remained. French arms would be victorious once again, and the Empire would be uh, reborn in fire. But the history book on the shelf would not be repeating itself. Yes. Well, that's up to us. Uh, so, uh, I'll play the video and read it out, and then we'll get straight into the battle. So, here we go. Napoleon seems unstoppable. His armies pushed us aside with ease. There has been little rest on the retreat. But here, we will make a stand. Napoleon has pushed. He goes no further. Gentlemen in London will envy anyone here today who faces the Emperor and his army at Waterloo. So, uh, okay, so Napoleon and Ney. Looks like they've split it into two armies. That, that does look big. And we've got Wellington, us, and Blücher, who we have to hold out and wait for for as long as possible. So, um, okay, so we've got the British army there on the slope. Uh, this is the town behind us, I think. Um, so, I'm going to start the battle. There's not much to see from here. Uh, and again, I'll read out the briefing as it goes, and then we'll review our situation. I have decided to make our stand here, on the Brussels Road, south of Waterloo. Despite yesterday's rain, that fellow just keeps coming on. The main body of my army is on the reverse slope, to protect them from the Corsican's artillery. Line infantry! The remainder are positioned at Hougamont on my right, with a unit of Jaegers hidden in the orchard. La Haye Saint in the centre, and Papalot on my left. These we must hold. As always, that man has his artillery. His guns are strong on the right, and he has placed those dashed Imperial Guard behind La Belle Alliance. They are tough fighting men. I know that Blücher will keep his promise. He will be here, but until then my gin sodded, sodden wretches, bless them, will have to hold the high ground. Right, uh, so this army looks more impressive than the one we commanded. And the one we commanded is Napoleon was impressive enough, but this is an even bigger army, I think. Um, yes, this is, I think because it's split in two. Ney commands a bit and Napoleon commands the rest. It makes me think that they can squeeze more than 20 units uh, into this battle. Which is it's cool, it's epic. Uh, but, my goodness, we are going to be in for quite the battle. Um, I'm wondering if we put these guys in there, actually. These Jaegers. I think that might be better. Or we can put them over here. They might actually be on more use... No, I think I'll, I'll try to put him in the building for now. No. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's put these guys... Um, sort of here. It was good to have them on the reverse of the slope, but at the same time... We need to be able to bring our muskets to bear and have actual sight of the enemy. Okay, the Black Watch down here is a little too... close. Let's bring them up a bit. Let's bring the um, Dutch line infantry up here. And rifles down there, that's good. They've put the stakes down for us, that's excellent. 
Uh, let's. Should we keep them there? No, I think we should bring them back. Uh, I think we will. I'll put them there for now. Um, let's have a little look at our stuff. We've got the lifeguards here, who are cool. Um, we've got Uxbridge, who was here in the uh, when we fought against him. We managed to kill him last time. Uh, that's the French. Hopefully, we'll keep him alive today. Same with the Duke of Wellington. We've got to keep you alive, oh boy. So. He's going to be crucial, his survival. Um, but I do like that they've... He looks... Almost like the same uh, outfit he wore in the uh, film, Waterloo. Um, so we've got the Dutch flunkers here. I'm going to bring them up as well a little bit. And I think that's it. The artillery is ready to fire already. Uh, am I keeping this German Legion in there about the same time? No, I will. I will. I'll keep them in there for now. Uh, same with the Nassau Jaegers. And. Okay, I think that's the situation that for now. Let's have a look at the French army. Got Napoleon Bonaparte, obviously. With his famous hat. Uh, the Young Guard. We had those in the last battle. We have Marshal Ney, who we had in the last battle as well. Uh, the Empress Dragoons. We didn't have these. Uh, these are, must be next level Dragoons. Look at that experience as well. That's good stuff. Uh, cuirassiers. Tough cuirassiers at that. Uh, the Dutch Guard Lancers. We didn't have these guys, but look at look at their uniforms. They look awesome. Um, I thought we were the ones of the Dutch units. <laughs> uh, so, Grenadiers, Derlon, Fusiliers. Where's the old guard? Where is it? That's the young guard. Two units of old guard with plenty of chevrons to go around. Boy, oh boy. This will be a showdown for the ages. Okay, right, I think we've gawped, gawped long enough. I think we've got to let things proceed, things go down. Light horse artillery. Right, they're going to be coming on in, in the same old style. So to meet them in the same old style. So we want to get ready. Yeah, so I think we want to form a more... Watch your arms, Black Watch! Oh, wow, they have, a, they have a unique line. I don't think I've ever noticed that before. The Black Guard have a... Black Watch have a... Unique... Voice. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have the rifles... Join us up here on the ridge. That's an excellent killing zone there, that slope. So I think it'll be good to make the most of it. Okay, the Nassau Yeager's already firing. That's awesome. I don't think we're in... Canister range yet. So... Oof. That building's taking more damage than it was when we commanded the battle as the French, which is a bit tricky, but what are you going to do? Okay. Let's form a... No. Oh, no, these guys can't make squares. That's a little bit annoying. Okay. Derlon. If you want to fight my rifles, come and get them. I'm going to lead you through these... Uh... Oh, that's a TPK. All right, now you're going to have to do another one. And survive a volley. Right, don't waste too many of your shots, men. Any more use for you yet? So you guys do that. You guys start firing on this unit here as it comes on. Uh, barrage, that'd be great. Looks like they're sending their fusiliers first, so it's not the um, best of the best coming on just now. Um, that's it, on um, boys. And we're firing on this unit quite nicely. Um, King's German Legion of Foot is getting. Destroyed, but the Brunswickers are holding up kind of well. I think it was good to put the Jaegers in there actually. They're, they're providing some good covering fire from there. Um, that unit is getting blasted away. Good. Um, Seems to be missing now. So, Black Watch. Yeah, I mean, these we can't match this experienced. You know, so the, all these chevrons and stuff makes their rate of fire and reloading skill really good. So. We, can't, we should be surprised that their fusiliers are defeating our... Well, not defeating, but holding their own against our really good um, cavalry. Infantry. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that again. Like, like in last... It's just... <laughs> I'm basically trying to multitask to no effect here. Okay, we've lost the building. Um, I would imagine that's uh, Papillot on the left. All right, so let's get ready to fight fire on this unit. Take out a few of them as they come on. Good. 
this uh, building is still holding out, but it won't for long. King's German Legion have fought well. Yeah, really well. They've got that Grenadier's unit really down. Alright, this, I'm, I'm, I'm abandoning this building. It's far too damaged now. So, let's pull back. Bruger, where are you? <laughs> oh, I need you. Right. Okay, I'm actually going to target the unit because I'm worried that like, this slope is actually going to be a bit of a tricky up target. So, and then I'm going to do a barrage. Because there's not too much infantry left in this flank, so I don't, and we can't turn it. So I think it'll make more sense to just use all its abilities now. Um, now okay, that unit's coming out of the building as well, so let's cast the that grenadier unit. Um, are they out yet? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I think... Okay, let's form up on the hill and spread ourselves out a bit and try and make, get that ranged advantage. Because, yeah, we're not holding on to that building, despite what uh, the debriefing said. It's just not... I don't think it's going to happen. Like force, I don't think these guys can actually see. All right, maybe they can. Let's see. Let's see. I don't think they can. Yes, they can. Yeah, good. Yeah, that's done it. That's sent them packing. All right, fire on those lances. That's what you can see from there, so... Why not? Okay, they're wasting their bullets on that building because there's a couple of men in there left, I think. A few men have held out, fighting to the last, like them. <laughs> so that's fine, that unit's just going to hold there, trying to, quote, take it, end quote. Uh, this unit's off, good. Cavalry's mustering there. Uh, that's worrying. That uh, might be Marshal Ney's um, out. Okay, yeah, they're coming on. Uh, let's... No, no, get behind the Chevy D3, that's what it's there for. Uh, you guys are going to have to pull back. You, we're going to... Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of... That's a lot of cavalry. Right, make a square. And same for... Uh, you guys are not going to be any use there. Um, you guys have to make a square, I think, as well. You guys fall up there. Marshal Ney's coming on. He's brought all the cavalry. Okay, we should have done some canister there, it's a shame we didn't get to, but that's the way it goes. Fortunately, we made a square there. Um, yeah, pull back, guys. See if we can get away. Try and see if, see if we can lead them to that square. And then fire on the Carassiers. Oh, no, the Carassiers crabs. Okay, fine, I'm going to send the lifeguards in. I think they're a match. So, save the rifles. Uh, got a square here to hold out again. Um, okay, Marshal, that, that, I'm guessing that's Marshal Ney. There's no way that's Napoleon, so Marshal Ney's down. They're running around the Chevy D3. Our lifeguards coming, yep. Okay, they're going for this unit, I think, but it can't make a square, it's too small. So, but the lifeguards are here to save them, so that's fine. Save them from a flanking. Good. Okay, we're holding those units there on that flank. And, okay, now these guys can make a square. All right, you do it. Uh, that unit needs to keep holding up. This unit has somehow survived and can keep cannoning away. That's good. The foot guards will have to hold out. I think they will. Oh, nice cannon shot on my lifeguards there. Uh, I'm going to turn. Uh, no, I think we need to make a square. We need to bring more muskets to bear. Um, try and make a square now. These guys have had enough from coming back, so we'll change that. We'll attack this unit then. They, they've given up the chase on the Carassiers. So, uh, okay, uh, we're holding off Ney's assault just long enough. Bruca, where are you, man? <laughs> Come on! We're holding out, this is everything. Um, this is everything we have. Right, I think these guys can come out of their square, bring their muskets to bear. Yep, those Carassiers made short work of our infantry. Alright, you guys make a square. Uh, lifeguards, get back a bit. You guys fire onto their flank. And in fact, let's get... Oh, yeah, we've got some rifles over here. Good. Yeah, let's get the rifles over here. Um, okay, fine. Um, they've sent their infantry away. Let's actually pull back. Let's pull back over here. All right, take out those cuirassiers. Meanwhile, while you do that, we're going to get the reinforcements to come from this side. They don't need to be in a long, thin formation. They can fire between themselves, so that's okay. 
Um, well, I feel like Bluka came on way quicker <laughs> when we fought as the French. Okay, and we're behind the slope now, so we're going to negate their um, cannons. He's got, oh, he's going to already fire. Excellent. So if you guys could do that, that would be smashing. Farm those grenadiers as they come on. Hey, do you have any bullets left? Brilliant stuff. In fact, let's, let's keep pulling back. Let's keep drawing them in front of the rifles. Um, yeah, our lifeguard's getting massacred here. Um, but if they can just sort of tie and win, I'll take it. Okay, now, now, yeah, we'll do some firing now on these guys. Um, that fusilier line unit should... Yep, yeah, that didn't last too long. Good. Let's swing these guys around. Uh, you guys skirmish. Because if they're going to try and fight, you'll lose. Uh, they're not going to skirmish. Okay, fine, we're going to have to do it ourselves. Uh, you guys turn around. Um, yeah, let's bring you guys sort of this way. These guys will not let's shoot on them. These guys will shoot on them. Good, the lifeguards won. Okay. They went orange there first. I was a bit worried. So let's get you guys behind the slope. The Black Watch is still alive as well. Excellent. I want to bring everyone behind the line now. Um, we've still got some cavalry there. It's worrying. So. Uh, you guys come here. Yes, yeah. sir. If we can deal with this unit, that's going to be interesting because I'm going to be just interested to see what their next move is. Oh, their plan was to take out the rifles all along. <laughs> but, unluckily for them, the foot guards, or the foot, are there to meet them. Turn off skirmish, because that seems to be a waste of time. They're not doing it anyway. They're still reloading. Yep, good, that unit's fleeing. Excellent, let's form everybody out now. Behind the slope. Um, I'm hoping the type of turn time advantage is in our favour, as in, we're the ones who have to hold out. I don't see why we should be the ones who have to win this battle in a set time frame. That's not really our job. We're defenders. So, it could be. I have absolutely zero idea if that is the case or not. I, I really don't. Um, as always, I'm just sort of winging this and hoping... Best. Okay, some cavalry's going off. Is that is that heralding the appearance of our Prussian allies? No. Where is he? <laughs> There's still so many elite units to deal with. Three units of young guard. Or two units, how many? Two young guard. Two old guard. Fuse of fuse in not, We're not hitting these guys with any artillery, I don't think. They're, they're too well covered. But they're firing into the slope. So, um, I don't think we have to worry about their artillery doing too many casualties. The grenadiers are fleeing back. What have they got here? 12-pounder, 12-pounder, 8-pounder, 12-pounder. So they haven't got that 6-pounder horse artillery that we had. And I, there's no way I'm marching across this land to get to him. Just, it's, that is not happening. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. So, let's have all the artillery fire on this Fusiliers unit. We might as well. Because the artillery's not hurting us. So, it's a shame to waste our cannons attentions on that. Let's try and do as much damage as we can to this Fusiliers unit. Which has a that is an extremely high green morale bar. I think yeah, Napoleon is uh, giving an awful lot of advantage. Okay, it looks like these guys are they, they formed over here quite interestingly. Um, okay yeah, nay it's gone. We lost that building but it's empty now. I wonder if we can actually see. Can we see that unit? Are we on guard? Because if we can take some of them out from a distance, that would be great, but. Ah, oh, look, 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 blue! I see blue! Blue for Bluka! Musketeers, Grenadiers, Landwehr. Okay. I am seriously hoping that you guys don't just get rolled up by this cavalry and that you can do some damage. Give me night. <laughs> or give me blue cup. It appears, Uxbridge. We're losing the battle. Right. This unit's taken a real beating. That's that's really good. And we have yeah, still quite a lot of elite inventory to deal with over here. Now hopefully Oh boy, I had a horn. They're coming on. 
let's how should we do this should we try and leave that oh, finally we had <laughs> those cannons got really rolled back look at that maybe if we could lead them toward this cannon we can get some canister to support and I think I might refer deploy in the reverse of the slopes we've got some flunkers here that we can use let's bring them over here I think we're good to fight something on this slope because yeah we can, we can get we, we can sort of set up a zone with which to fight uh, this flank's empty now I don't really think anyone's going to come on this one so let's bring everyone let's bring up I'm abandoning my position on the left <laughs> I want what remains of us here here horse artillery here okay we've done oh we could even take a pot shot at Napoleon but I think it was a bit cheap <laughs> so maybe I won't maybe I will because I can't actually fire on anything this these guys are almost out of range now so um like I said, I'm trying to lead them toward this cannon Okay, we're taking out some of their. So take the thing that's out Napoleon. Okay, I'm just going to put on slow motion. Because I just want to see what the situation here with Bluco is. Um, okay, he's coming on. That's quite a good army. Three, two musketeers, one grenadiers, land veer times two. And. A six pounder. That's not gonna be much help. Um, but it might. And maybe some cavalry will be coming in as well. With any luck. That could do some damage, because we're gonna be dealing with this. He should be able to roll up against Oh, he's gonna take two young guard off us. Oh boy, they came on quicker than I expected. Okay, right. Um the plan to get them in front of the canister did not work. Let's instead set up a really good killing zone on this whole flank and yeah I'm going to put these guys here can these guys no unfortunately we can't, can't see them that's the problem uh, let's form there I just think if we want to negate their artillery as much as possible they're outgunning us in that front so I don't see any reason to ok fine um, maybe we should pull back then a little more. I don't want us to glitch out and waste our ammo on a hill. So let's pull back a bit. And like I'm going to get this cavalry to charge in. If things get really desperate, I want them there, ready to try and send. Okay, this artillery barrage. Go on, see if we can get one not like shot on Napoleon. No, but you've, you've done a lot of damage on the unit, so uh, I'll, I'll take that for now. And you've taken a lot of shots for us. Alright, you guys stop firing for now. I've got to remember to turn you back on though. Um, Infantry, I should sort of deploy up there so we're not really covered by a hill. Same with you. Right, here we go. This is it. Now, Maitland! Now's your time! <laughs> right, start firing. See so if you can get if you can get the first shots, that will even out the odds considerably. Right, you fire at will. Just start firing. Don't wait till information, just fire. Come on, come on, come on, come on, it's the old guard for crying out loud. Unleash everything you have into these guys. Uh, okay, we've got two units here in reserve. Let's bring them up. Wellington, you come up to support Uxbridge too. I know you and Wellington don't get on, but today you need to work together. That's it. These guys are just milling about. Come on. Yes, come on. Do as much damage. Okay, that unit's off. Fine, it was pretty depleted. Uh, let's... What were they? The foot guards. All right, but they've put in a shift today, so... You guys skirmish. That's it. Leave them on a goose chase. Meanwhile, let's get these guys to fire on them. If they're running, they're not fighting. So I'm happy to skirmish and let them chase our units. You guys watch, march a little closer. You march up there. You keep firing on that unit. Guys, Dutch line infantry, you've got ammo, so you fire. That's it. Fire into that unit as much as you can. Set up about here for now. Keep firing on this unit here. It's like they've got multiple hit points. It's like no matter how many bullets are firing them, they're not going down all that quick. Uh, let's... Um, Bring the cavalry up this way a bit. Um, who's died? Bluke is dead. Okay, well, to be honest, I was worried that was Wellington. I thought a stray bullet might have got him. So, uh, Bluke is dead. 
I wonder how much that would change things, I don't know. Uh, Wellington, I want you to rally everybody here. That's it, blow your uh, bugle. Uh, come on, everyone. We can't let up just yet. These, these old guard will fight for the last. Everything you have, fire it. Chuck stones if you got them. That's it, take this unit out. Fire as much as you can into it. I'm not even going to try and melee it. That's how intimidated I am <laughs> by this sizable unit of old guard. That's come on. That, look how, look how short work they've made of that unit there. That's considerable. That's it, this, okay, they're getting quite, that unit's getting depleted now. I'm happy to see that orange. Good. Keep firing. Obviously. That's it. If you can make that one, oh, it's green again. Just look how strong these guys are. Come on, everything you've got, guys. Right, this Dutch line infantry's next to die, I think, but... Okay, I'm going to get Uxbridge on the left there to charge in. If this blank flank... Okay, good. That one's off. Excellent. Bear skins galore for us after the battle. But let's take out that unit. Is that, can that unit see? Yes. That unit... That, they, they can all still see and reach. So we'll, keep, we'll hold our position here. Uxbridge, you pull back a bit. Keep firing. All right, let's bring more guns to bear. Yeah, let's have you on this slope. You're firing overhead, so that's nice. Um, all right, actually, Oxbridge, charge in. You keep firing on... Yeah, fire on the pilot if you can. Uh, I want Oxbridge to charge in because... Okay, if we can get a volley before Oxbridge charges in, that would be perfect. Come on, do what you can. Come on, guys. That's it, now charge him. Alright, rifles, stop firing. That's it, well done, Uxbridge. Take that unit out, come on. Yes! Excellent. The old guard are off. The old guard has broken! Let's get everyone back behind the slope so they can't hit us. Right, I'm going to put the cavalry over here now. So we've got cavalry on both flanks. Wellington, you're a little too exposed there. So let's get you down. Bluka's men... Um, how much damage have they done? Good damage. Yeah, that young guard unit is nearly dead. They've... They've... Bluka commanded this horribly and got himself killed, but... He's taken out the young guard, so that's fine. There's just an, a fusiliers of line unit there. What now? Do we... Okay, we've got one more cannon unit that can just see uh, that fusiliers of line unit. And in the meantime, I'll think about sort of sending cavalry around the flank if it... So I'm just nervous. I don't want it to be that the cavalry, the, the timer, cavalry, that the timer lets him win if we don't do it in time. In fact, I'm so nervous about Wellington dying. I'm going to send him behind here. So I just feel like a lucky shot could happen. Is that Spencer alive? Or did he die in the charge? He's still going. Archbridge, the slayer of the old guard. All right, yeah, let's get Eagle behind the as well. I find the cavalry is an easier target for cannons to hit. So the young guard are dead. Come on. Well, avenge Blucher, you Prussian, <laughs> Prussian boys. Uh, we've got a cannon there. Hasn't stepped up yet still. Wonder where they're going. But if you can take, yeah, if you can make those guys flee. Let's send, oh, we've still got these Dutch Hussars as well. Let's send them this way, down this slope. Hopefully these guys won't notice and we'll help the Prussians roll up uh, some of these cannons and this last unit of infantry here. Our cannon will keep firing on them. We're out of barrages now. Let's send the Dragoons uh, up this way. Yep, yeah, another, another happy landing. Another nice hit. Okay. Oh, one of those is a militia unit and it's facing the wrong way. So that's filling me with lots of confidence right now. Unfortunately, I don't think... Yeah. Oh, Napoleon. No, I don't think we can turn that. So the barricade that we're, we, our cannons are behind can't means that we can't turn around. Okay, we've actually got the cavalry across the land faster than I had expected. So that's good. I'm actually going to get. I'm actually going to charge and hit the la, uh, fusiliers. I feel like if the fusiliers go, then that's it. So um, I'm going to be a gentleman and not target Napoleon just yet. I right, see that canister, so they're aware that we're nearby, but they're not turning around. So. I'm going to do a double whammy on that unit. 
Okay, okay, fine, it's... it's Smelters. <laughs> so, alright. They, they want to fight with Napoleon, so do it. You guys charge into that unit. Oh boy, hopefully I haven't sent these guys to a... Okay, Napoleon... Okay, that, that the unit of Napoleon's bodyguard is... what well, Napoleon's bodyguard is going down quite quick. You guys will leave that unit. Okay, you guys... Fire on that cavern. I don't want you to get friendly fire on the um, Dragoons and the Hussars. Okay, a good charge on that Fusiliers of Line unit. If Napoleon goes down and he's not, he's fighting well. Those five men have killed an extra 10, 15 of ours. That's not filling with confidence. We do have some lifeguards and Uxbridge himself in reserve, but we can't seem to get him. How tough he is! Okay, he's, he's down! That's it. Napoleon's been wounded. That unit is off. That that's it. I think we've Come on, alright, now we've got to wrap we've got to roll up these cannons. Guys, stop firing on them. Um that's it, take out that 12 pounder. And roll into them. These cannons don't know when to quit. They're still laws for Emperor. Just because he's wounded. <laughs> Oh, Alright, yeah, that cannon's firing into us, it's making me nervous, but... Stop it! <laughs> we haven't got Blue around to tell them to stop. Yes! It's done! That's it! The old guard has broken, Napoleon has fled. Well, he's wounded. That's it! Victory! We've, d <laughs> we've done it! It's over! It's... Oh, wow, that's it, that is... Oh wow, that was fun. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed playing that as the Allies. That was so much fun. I loved for once in this series kind of being the one to have to do the holding out and the defending on a desperate situation. I find those can often be the most fun battles to do in, in any of these games. When you're the one else to defend and hold out in desperation, it is so much fun and that was no exception. And what a fun little set piece. The script with Marshal Ney coming on halfway through the battle with his cavalry was quite tense. He sends everything, but fortunately we realise it's 73. Well, I'm going to click end battle, and uh, if Wellington has something to say, uh, I'll read it out. I say, that'll do, men. That'll do. They came on in the same old way, and we beat them in the same old way. <laughs> there we go. So, um, and with history, uh, so Uxbridge kept his leg this time, and he survived. He fought the old guard and won. He's got a tale to tell. Uh, Wellington came through without scratch, so it wasn't so desperate like it was when we fought as the uh, French and Napoleon went down. We formed something of a of an Alamo there. Uh, we, I think, going behind the line, they're taking on the old guard on our side of the ridge and hitting it from all sides with our rifles and our guns and charging it at the last minute with Uxbridge to stop it from firing. I mean, you saw how you know that was crude. I think that was key in that final battle because two old guard units. If we mismanaged that, I reckon threatened to roll up what was left of our army, I genuinely think so. So we had to do that right. And yeah, that was, oh gosh, that was good. You saw how you know, one, even one unit took on that Dutch, oh, was it the Dutch King's German light foot? They just made short work of them. So, okay, I'm just gonna make a save for that. So I was worried that they were gonna sweep through quite handily, but we held on long enough. Okay. And that's a close victory. I would say that was. Uh, Bluka died. Uh, he got his two heads strong and charged him. But his men were key. I'm so glad they muddled their way through to taking out those. Um, in fact, yeah, if we clip that, we can sort of zoom around the back for a bit. So look at this carnage here. Uh, Bluka's army, somewhere in there is Bluka as well. They took out those young guard, which I was worried about if he didn't, then we would have had another set of elite units to deal with but we didn't have that problem. We had one Fusiliers of Line unit you left that we hit with the cavalry, and we took out Napoleon, who put up a good fight himself. Took out, I think, 20 of our Dragoons? I think when it was just the last five of his men, something ridiculous. Um, we had m more men, total, combined, the Allied forces, but we o we total. this is a really epic sized battle, look at this. So we totaled just shy of 3,000 men, I think it's literally the same as when we fought as Napoleon. Um, but they had more... Napoleon had more men than we had. Uh, we, we had 2,000 men. No more. And they and he had Ney. So it was harder for us as the 
allies here. We had to fight more men. Napoleon had 2,100 men of good stuff. I mean, those were good units. That's what I liked about this battle for both sides. It was the creme, creme de la creme of like the, of both armies fighting each other. That's what was quite fun. And there's Marshal Ney. Well, he got himself killed quite quickly, which was helpful. So Marshal Ney charged him with his cavalry as he did on the day. He felt he was uh, Wellington was retreating, but was only withdrawing of about 100 yards. They formed squares, which we did, and held off the cavalry. But it did threat, threaten our flank here because they marched on again with more infantry. They counterattacked because we rebuffed the first attack. So they came on again with more infantry. They charged him with cavalry, so we formed squares. And that threatened to break our line. I think the uh, King's German Legion went by that point. And we had to bring up more men from the left. We had to abandon our position here because we won the sort of skirmish on this side of the map. So we didn't need any more over there. So we brought them over here. Uh, Wellington um, rallied the men during that key bit here, which kept everyone's morale high. Blucher lost a lot of men as well. We lost a lot of men. I mean, it was um, even on the day in the real battle, the British army lost an awful lot of men. Uh, you know, it's it extremely bloody for the British army, which is a volunteer army. Uh, and it was, you know, it was in such a small area, so it was one of the, it made it like one of the bloodier battles of the entire war as well, because it was just so desperate and close. And uh, yeah, both sides lost an awful lot of men, um, but Napoleon was held. But as Wellington would say, next to a battle lost, the saddest thing is a battle won. And uh, fortunately, we can say that we were the victors today. Uh, unit statistics, uh, no, no changes. Not too. I mean, who killed the most? The 42nd Black Watch killed a lot with 125, very nice. Uh, the cannons did a fair bit of damage, but they weren't the main, they didn't swing it today, like they often do. They often get like hundreds of kills, but not today. Duke of Wellington, yeah, no kills, that's fine. I wanted to keep him well out of danger, because if, if he died, his morale-inspiring presence would have been missed considerably. In fact, we, they might have, they would have rolled us up easily if he went down. Uxbridge killed 24 men, all old guard, pretty cool. The Dutch line infantry did put in a shift, 100 men. The foot guards, nearly 200 men. Same with the other foot guards, another 200 men. Okay, they were the MVPs today. That unit of foot, 175. Oh, it's just a humble unit of foot. I thought foot implied um, elite. Okay, so they... These guys killed a lot of men. And that was mostly it. Those, the rifles did quite a lot of damage. Um, the Jaegers, some of them, unfortunately, didn't do too much. And the cavalry, a little bit here and there. But it was, it was an infantry battle today for us. And they did most of the damage. That was really fun. That was extremely fl uh, fun. I really enjoyed that. And... <laughs> can't believe that's the end. That's, uh... Yeah, that's a real shame. It felt like the old guard when we were fighting them here as well. That... It almost felt like they had more hit points, because we were firing a lot of bullets into them, but they just weren't, like, depleting as fast as I would have liked, which was making me tense. But eventually they went down. Because I, I was worried that, since Napoleon was still alive, that their morale would mean they would fight until like 10 men left or something silly like that, which made them last long enough for our men to flee. But fortunately that didn't happen. Uxbridge came in at the right moment and hit them in the rear and changed the course of the battle at that point of time. Wow. Overall, really pleased with that. I had good fun with that um, battle. Uh, so let's go have a little look at and we did that as course, and we ended uh, as the Iron Duke, <laughs> as part of the, you know, in theme, in keeping with the theme of the eponymous, um, in the eponymous theme of the channel, the Iron Duke itself, so I think that was quite an appropriate way to end it. And let's have a look at that gold eagle on the map. Don't crash. There it is. Oh, oh that's amazing to see. Look at that, 12 gold eagles. We did it, guys. We actually did it. We actually went through every single one of these battles and on very hard against all the odds and managed to do it, starting at Lodi and working our way through all these battles. We made it all the way through to the end. Um, there's, some, there's some funny little... There's a, there's a funny few comments I might add in that. There's a few battles I think are quite surprising weren't in this campaign. Such as um, Jena Ostat, which is another one of his amazing victories. It basically knocked the Prussians out of the war of the um, fourth coalition or fifth coalition. Um, that was a twin battle against the Prussians, and I was I'm surprised that's not here. That's another one of his famous. It's more famous than say Friedland, 
So it's, it's surprising that they didn't put that in there. And Leipzig, uh, which was the biggest battle of the entire war, they left that one out as well, quite surprisingly. Um, but, you know, they can't, I know they can't put everything in it. Uh, there's only so many they can do. Um, you know, Waterloo you wouldn't have in there. Trafalgar and the Nile makes sense. Pyramids is fun. I think two Italian campaign battles is a bit much. Uh, if we had to, if, if we're saying we're kept at twelve, I'd likely take out Friedland and one of the Italian ones, and put in Jena or Stadt and maybe Leipzig, just as a sort of a haphazard guess. You know, it's, you know a brainstorming something. And also, what I would say overall, right, is. I would have had, I think I've mentioned before, but I would have had Trafalgar and the Nile before as the British, because you're not reversing history in either way. If, you, if we won the Battle of the Nile as the French, then the course, this whole campaign wouldn't have happened because Napoleon would have been able to carry on in the east over here, maybe march on India. And if we won it as the Trafalgar, as the, the Trafal, if we won the Battle of Trafalgar as the French, then the point was Napoleon, you know, uh, depends on. You know, historians can debate, of course, but theoretically, he could have marched on Britain, and that would have been a different campaign entirely. He wouldn't have then carried on if he thought he could invade Britain. So, I would have had it that you, to, in order to keep it sort of believable that he's still stuck in this campaign, I would have had the British fight this and have like Nelson narrate both battles. And it's weird, it's a shame that they don't have a voice actor for the for Wellington there, and then they could have done that for Nelson here, because they have a British voice actor. You hear it on the campaign map, but you know, it's strange. Um, so th that's a different time, mate. But hey, you know, at the same time, it's kind of satisfying winning it as the French. Um, and what would I say was the hardest one? I would say it's apples and oranges. It's either Trafalgar or Waterloo f as France, and it's apples and oranges because one's a naval battle and one's a land battle. I feel like Trafalgar is way more chaotic and kind of depends on a little bit, quite a lot of luck. So in a way, I'd say Trafalgar, but Waterloo as France does come very close. It could be that. It depends. After yesterday, um, last episode, sorry, when I fought Waterloo, I would have said that. But when I fought Trafalgar, I, I felt, no, it's definitely this one. Borodino was tough. That was a really tough position we were up against there, but we managed to break through. Um, that took a few goes. No, two goes, I think. Um, but, yeah. Austerlitz wasn't too bad actually. Neither was Friedland or Dresden was hard. Actually, Dresden was quite tricky. Lodi and Arcole were fine, but I think I just sort of fortunately had quite a good battle. It can be hard. Because obviously these two were the easier ones to reach as a kid when I played this game, so I did these two quite a few times. I barely ever touched these late ones. Uh, I certainly never reached that like, as far as Waterloo and Ligny, as what French Waterloo and Ligny. But you can do the Battle of Waterloo in Napoleon's campaign, so you can fight Waterloo without having to do this whole thing. You can do it as part of Napoleon's campaigns, but it doesn't give you the Gold Eagle if you do that. So you have to do it here. <laughs> and I think it's slightly different as well. I think this one's harder. I think if you do it on Napoleon's campaign, that one's a little easier. But I can't remember. It's been a long time. Um, the Pyramids was a good fun one. Uh, that was good fun because it's so different. Fighting in a different setting against a different kind of enemy altogether. Um, but overall, and yeah, it was, that was such... A fun challenge to do, and I really hope, guys, that you enjoyed following along. Um, and I hope you don't think I made too many mistakes, even though I certainly made quite a few <laughs> as we went through. But overall, you know, a win's a win. You get those gold eagles, and then you get to look at it as we are now with all these battles done. And that concludes this mini series on Napoleon's battles. Um, we started off as a as a uh, rookie general in Lodi, an Italian campaign, and we ended it as the emperor, and then. As the Iron Duke himself, we put an end to his mad schemes once and for all, um, with a lot of bloodshed along the way, <laughs> and a few quotes from Waterloo <laughs> in this episode as well, to top it all off. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Um, I'm not sure, I might do another mini mini series on battles on another Total War game, because um, I did enjoy this, but it's also <laughs> it's quite stressful, these um, battles. But uh, these kinds of things he sent us. But I love them. I kind of wish that they got more focus in this series. I, I think it's because they're not an awful lot of pl people play them. They don't put as much effort into them as they used to. Um, but the, these get the, this game had a really good way of doing it. You know, like with Napoleon narrating and playing it as like a story, and 
you know, you're playing, you're recreating all these famous battles. It was really well done in this game, I think. Um, it's certainly. Uh, I think the only comparable one is probably Alexander, where you do Alexander's battles, obviously, uh, and it's you know it's a sequence of battles under the same commander. Um, but the difference here, we get cool little naval battles, hard as they are. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to keep waffling, guys. So I better end this video before this video is just ten percent battle, ninety percent me waffling. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Uh, we'll see if we do another battle mini series. I hope you learned a few things, got some advice and tips, maybe on how to do these battles if you wanted to try them yourself. That wasn't the point of this, my point was just muddle through and see if we can do it, but if there's any advice or tactics that you can pick up, by all means try and replicate it. I hope I muddled through into something clever. <laughs> you never know. Anything clever I do is entirely by accident, just so you know. Um, but yeah, uh, stay tuned guys for the next uh, series, whatever it might be. And, well, that's that. Napoleon's Battles mini-series, very hard difficulty complete. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Take care.